day for many college students. I'm Abby Alford working for you on why one student says there was nothing moving ready about it. More business owners in Barrio Logan are telling us prostitution is out of control. The new video they shared with us. There is not a bad seat in the house. We'll take you inside the new Snapdragon Stadium. Plus, updated isolation guidance from the state tonight when it comes to monkeypox. And we'll tell you about an elegant dinner that will serve both you and your community. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. Move in day for one San Diego College student did not go as planned today. Good evening. I'm Jesse Pagan and I'm Anna Laurel. Marcella and Carlo are off tonight. Jenny Robbie shared pictures of a bug infested apartment with dirty carpet and a broken refrigerator at Boulevard 63. That's an off campus complex near San Diego State. Now the mother is in tears trying to figure out where to move her daughter now. CBS 8's Abby Alford went to work to help get some answers. Outside Boulevard 63, it looks like it's this cool college apartment complex, but inside one student says is squalor. So we're finding out what's being done about it. greasy appliances. It's gross. Like it just wasn't cleaned. There's pee on the wall, stained carpet, and then there were like flies all underneath her bed and the smell. It reeks of cigarettes. This was move in day for Kaylee Herzberger at Boulevard 63 apartments in the college area on Thursday. But it wasn't just our apartment. It was chaos in our whole hall. Jenny Robbie says that she flew down from Sacramento to move in her Mesa College daughter into Boulevard 63, an off campus apartment near SDSU. And I said, no, this is not okay. She says she went straight to management and she said, you know, what can I do to make this move in experience better for you? And I said, we're not moving in. You, you, uh, it's inhabitable. We cannot move in in these conditions. Yeah, I called Boulevard 63. Um, she has pictures, she has video that shows um, deplorable conditions. I emailed and went to the leasing office to help mom get answers. So the leasing office says it's open till 6, but the doors are locked and I don't see anyone inside. CBS 8 did some digging and found a few small claims filed against their parent company, Teachers Insurance and Annuity Association of America. When you go on Boulevard 63's website, it says where home is paradise. It's everything we touch is filthy and sticky. CBS 8 found several horrible reviews dating back several years on Boulevard 63's Facebook page. The apartment complex responded to some saying that it would look into their complaints. There's so many kids that are getting taken advantage of. Jenny also shared a copy of the lease, but it could cost them to break it. $12,648. We spoke with Tenants United, an advocacy group who says that they may have a case if the unit is in unlivable conditions. We're missing a part of our couch. We were missing beds. Kaylee's two cars are still packed to the brim. What was supposed to be a fun mother-daughter weekend has turned into a nightmare. But it was far from happy. It was really, really upsetting. And it was really upsetting for all the kids that just didn't know what to do. Tenants United says that you can also file a complaint with code enforcement. To learn more, go to CBS8.com, click on the help button. The apartment manager says they addressed Kaylee and her mom's concerns and the unit is ready to move in. A spokesperson for the company called Abby back late in the day and said they would send a statement as to why this happened. We'll keep you updated on that response. If there's an issue you'd like us to look into, remember we're working for you. Email us at workingforyou at cbs8.com. A man is dead this afternoon after a three hour standoff and fire in El Cajon this morning. It all started around 930 at a home on 4th Street. Authorities tell us the 58 year old man suffering a mental crisis barricaded himself inside the home and threatened to kill himself. Deputies arrived to find the garage and house in flames. Officers eventually went inside and say they saw the man shot and killed himself. No one else was hurt. After weeks of pushback from neighbors, sexually violent predator Michael Martinez will move to the Borrego Springs community. This morning, a judge ruled Martinez will move into the property on Running M Road on September 24th. Martinez will be under constant surveillance, and while he is allowed to go outside of his home, he cannot leave his property. But Supervisor Jim Desmond says the community may not be notified if any of Martinez's privileges change. And right now, San Diego police are looking for this man accused of kidnapping and sexual assault in Pacific Beach. It happened last Saturday morning. Police say a woman was walking alone near PB Drive at Gresham Street when she was approached by this man who offered her a ride. When she said no, police say he forced her into his car, drove to an area near Oliver Avenue and Everett Street and sexually assaulted her.
Police say the man then drove her back to PB Drive near Noyes Street, and that's where she was able to escape. He's described as being in his 30s with short, dark brown hair and a mustache. He was driving an older model tan or gold sedan. Anyone with information should call Crime Stoppers. That number is 888-580-8477, or you can call San Diego Police. We're getting more complaints from business owners off Main Street in Barrio Logan about prostitution they say is out of control there. Some say a new state law decriminalizing loitering is making the problem worse. CBS 8's David Gofferson got video from this past weekend and went to the neighborhood today to see what's happening there. It's getting worse. Uh, you know, the hookers are there day and night. All you have to do is look at this one video clip from Dalbergia Street in Barrio Logan, and it tells the entire story. A parade of prostitution this past weekend as the Johns drive by and count them one, two, three, four, five, six women on the street flagging down cars appearing to solicit prostitution. And that's just one corner on one weekend night. There's just no patrolling of the area. There's no policing of the area. And it's, uh, it's a free-for-all anymore. And it's not just at night. I recorded this video today at 1 in the afternoon. In fact, all the video you see in this report was recorded over the last two months. The businessman who spoke to me wanted to remain anonymous because he's afraid of the pimps. We've heard gunshots in the middle of the day. Um, we've seen hookers run up and down the street, chase people out of their cars. Um, they walk right up to your car. They will open up the door um, as they're walking by. You slam your door. They take it as an aggression towards them. Uh, you have to drive off, and uh, if there's a pimp in the area, um, he will chase you down. Another business owner told me she thinks it's gotten worse since Governor Newsom signed a state law last month that decriminalized loitering for the purpose of prostitution. You know, I don't even understand that law, and I don't even know how something like that gets passed. I reached out to both San Diego Police and the Office of District 8 City Councilwoman Vivian Moreno, who represents Barrio Logan, but I did not get a response. We don't see any patrolling of the area. Um, it doesn't take much for just an officer to sit out there and just park his car and just show a presence, but they won't even do that. Now in the coming weeks, we're gonna be filing public records requests with the police department to try and get a handle on whether prostitution activity has actually picked up in this area since that law went into effect last month. In Barrio Logan, David Goffertson, CBS 8. A wild update, David. Thank you. About two years and $310 million later, San Diego State University held its ribbon cutting for the new Snapdragon Stadium. The state of the art facility will host SDSU Aztecs, Wave FC, and of course, concerts. CBS 8's Kirsten Holmes was at today's ceremony and joins us now live. Kirsten, I love that you said there's not a bad seat in the house. Not a bad seat inside of the house. Anna Laura, you're absolutely right. Okay, so I'm here at the new Snapdragon Stadium. I want you to take a look behind me and behold this thing in all of its glory. The first scrimmage isn't until tomorrow. The first home game is still a couple of weeks away. But I got to tell you, ever since I've been on this property, you can already feel the energy outside of the stadium. And I got to tell you, today's ribbon cutting and that sneak peek inside did not disappoint. It's official San Diego State University's Snapdragon Stadium is ready for action. This is a great day for San Diego. Welcome to Snapdragon Stadium. Congratulations to San Diego. Go Aztecs, everybody. From representatives of the Kumeye tribe, elected officials, former players, and we can't forget the band and spirit squads, SDSU supporters are all beaming with pride. Before the festivities got underway, the SDSU Athletics Department gave CPS8 a sneak peek inside the 35,000 capacity stadium. And we're excited. This is, you know, it's our building, but we didn't build it just for us. We built it for the community of San Diego. That's John David Wicker. He's the athletic director for San Diego State University. He's our tour guide as we get a look inside the Snapdragon Stadium, named after the Snapdragon platforms that builders say power the fan experience. This is uh, really one of the probably more energetic spaces because if you're down here, the team's going to run out. You're going to get to be a part of the team, uh, celebrating as they head out to the field, whether at pregame or at halftime. Everyone's going to get to create their own experience in this building, so I'm excited for everybody to see it for the first time. And then really the intimacy of the seating bowl, you are on top of the action. Derek Grice is the executive associate director of athletics for Mission Valley Development. 
Gone are the days where people just want to sit for you know two and a half, three hours for a football game. Uh, I think people want to see what, what the building has experienced. One of the things that came back in a lot of our studies and a lot of our research is that the people in San Diego want a chair back seat. So every seat in this building uh, is a chair back seat. You don't see that in the college model. All right, SDSU is going to have a scrimmage here tomorrow. They say it's going to be like a stress test for this building. They're hoping to get anywhere from 10 to 20,000 people out here, work out all of the kinks before the big first home game on September 3rd. Reporting live at Snapdragon Stadium, I'm Kirsten Holmes. Back to you. State of the art. It's kind of cool that he's saying, oh, people don't want to just sit and watch the football game. We got other stuff for them there, too. Yeah, football game and more. That's fine.